we decided to break up our series with a special show featuring world-renowned author and speaker Hal Elrod of The Miracle Morning. After surviving multiple near-death experiences, Hal has been impacting millions of people through his books and speeches to, as he says, elevate the consciousness of humanity one morning at a time. Hal is going to be our guest speaker at Think Up Live on March 23rd, where he'll be sharing how realtors can thrive in this chaos of a current housing market by practicing powerful daily habits. You can find more information about Think Up Live in our show notes. Learn how to tackle any obstacle by tuning in. Okay, so let's start here. Uh, for those who have not read The Miracle Morning, give me the basic breakdown of what a Miracle Morning looks like. Yeah, great question um, or great start. So The Miracle Morning uh, is a, a morning ritual and it's also kind of a life philosophy in one. And the premise of it is that if you think about how you start your day sets the tone for, how, for the rest of the day. It sets the context. It sets the direction. And in other words, if you have a morning where the alarm goes off, you hit the snooze button three times, right? You're like procrastinating and getting out of bed. You get out of bed with this inner, oh God, I got to face the day, right? Like that's who you are showing up to your day with. And your results tend to reflect how you show up. The Miracle Morning is about waking up every day with intention and purpose and commitment. It's about having a growth oriented goal-oriented morning and dedicating time to become the person that you need to be to create everything else that you want for your life. So in that way, when you start your day with that kind of energy and momentum and, and focus, you can't help, you know, it's hard to not create a great day because you're showing up that way. And then it's made up of six practices. And these are, uh, when I was creating the Miracle Morning, I was looking for like the most effective morning personal growth practice and doing research, I ended up with a list of six practices and I go, well, which one's the best though? Like which one, you know, I, I can't do all of them. Like which one's the best? And I ended up, the epiphany was when I went, wait a minute, what if I did all of them? What if I woke up tomorrow and I did the six most timeless, proven personal development practices in the history of humanity? I thought, that would be A, the ultimate morning ritual, and B, that would help me to quickly become the best version of myself, right? And so the six practices are known as an acronym SAVERS. Um, and that's my wife's idea. We'll get that later. But silence, affirmations, visualization, exercise, reading, and scribing. And to quote one of my favorite authors, and I know many realtors' favorite authors, Robert Kiyosaki, um, oh, yeah. wrote Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Robert interviewed me on his radio show after he had read the book three times. He had read The Miracle Morning three times. He was doing it every day. And this kind of ties a nice bow on the practice is he said, how before The Miracle Morning and before those six savers, he said every successful person on the planet swears by at least one of the savers. Either they meditate to, to get their day started right, or they go to the, they exercise first thing in the morning, or they read and learn something, or they journal, right? He said, but I had never heard of anyone, myself included, he said, himself included, uh, he said that did all six of these. Maybe people do one or two, three at the most. He said, but when you do all six, you do create miracles in your life. He said, I think you named it right. So, so that in a nutshell, that's kind of the whole picture of what the Miracle Morning is. And so Miracle Morning, Monday through Friday, Monday through Sunday, what, how often do you get asked, do you really do this every single day of the week? I love that you asked that. I have personally averaged every day of the week for the last, uh, what do we have, 13 or 14 years since I started it? <laughs> um, All the gold stars, Hal. All the gold yeah. stars for that. <laughs> the, the only, and well, now, let, me, let, me, let me be clear. Uh, this is a question that we get a lot in the Miracle Morning community, sure. uh, the Facebook group. And it's, hey, you know, hey, I'm new to this. Like, I've been doing it Monday through Friday. Does anybody do it on the weekends? You know? And the, the answer is almost always consistent across the board for anyone that's done it for a while. And it's the same as, same as my answer, which is at first I did it Monday through Friday. And just because we're conditioned as a society, no, Saturday, you sleep in, you do nothing, you're lazy, right? It's same with Sunday. And so what happened is I'd feel amazing Monday through Friday, I'd wake up, I would meditate, I would journal, I would exercise, I would do affirmations, I would visualize, right? I would create the perfect day. And then Saturday I'd sleep in. And I'd wake up at, you know, eight or nine or 10 or whatever. And I'd get out of bed and go, eh, like compared to how I feel right now, compared to how I felt yesterday at this time, 
radically different, right? Because how you start your day sets the tone and the context and the direction for the day that you create. So most people, myself included, started with five days a week and then went to six days a week and then went to seven days a week. And I want to, I'll qu close this out by quoting Oprah Winfrey. And I'm going to probably butcher the quote, but the general idea, she said, um, I love waking up early and being productive on a Saturday morning because it doesn't come with the same time pressures that the mm. weekdays do. And mm -hmm. so my favorite miracle mornings are on the weekends because I wake up and I'm like, I can do the miracle morning and then I don't have to jump into work. I get to just wait till my kids come down and, and we just engage and play, right? Like it's such a free day. And so, yeah, I do the miracle morning seven days a week and most experienced practitioners do. But at the same time, if you do it, you know, four days a week, you're, it's still gonna change your life. You don't have to do it seven days a week. Yeah, I think that's interesting too, as both a parent, but also somebody that believes that you have to take care of yourself if you're gonna take care of other people, be it children, be it colleagues, friends, family, yeah. whatever. That like, if the point is to set your intention and be your best self for that day, then Saturdays and Sundays are for you anyway, or they're for your kids or they're for your family or whatever it might be. And why are we not putting the same energy into being our best, having our best day those days also? But we really don't as a society. Yeah. We, we value the weekends in a different way. Yeah. And, and lazy is not always best for us, right? <laughs> What'd you say? Lazy is not always best for us or slow is not always best for us. Yeah, I mean, there's nothing wrong with, good. yeah, there's nothing wrong with taking that, that slow time. In fact, it's, I think it's crucial. But, but here's what I've found. So the, you know, often we show up at our best for our work and our worst yeah. for the people that we love. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Like they, they get left. I used to realize that I played with my kids only in the evenings and they got leftover dad. They got dad that was exhausted. That was yes. mentally drained. There was emotionally fatigued. Right. And I'm like going through the motions, holding action figures in my hands, counting the minutes until they go to bed, you know, yes. That's terrible, yes. you know, and so I realized that if anybody deserves me to do a miracle morning and get intentional to create the best, show up as the best version of me for the day, it's my wife and my kids. Yeah. So my miracle morning on the weekend is very family focused. I do all my meditation, all my affirmations. It's designed to put me in a peak state for the family. And I'll give you a quick fun story. Um, so the other day I was really, I got in this state in the morning of being really playful with my kids. And I set this intention to go over and above that day. Like just to be wild, fun, crazy dad, right? And it, it, I don't know, you know, talk about like the law of, I don't, I don't even know what, but my, 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 my daughter, I went up in the morning, they were in the playroom and I said, hey guys, I didn't even hear you wake up. And she goes, dad, remember that one time when you like, uh, you role played and you, you put on a wig and you pretended you were like a little old lady and you shopped in the playroom and we sold you stuff? I go, yeah, yeah, I remember that. She goes, will you do that again? And I go, I'll be right back. And I go, okay, <laughs> my intention was set that morning to go over and above what they expected. So I went into my wife's closet. I put on a dress. <laughs> I grabbed the Halloween wig. I grabbed, and then I, I saw my wife. I'm like, okay, let's get, let's make it good. I grabbed my wife's lipstick, smeared it all over my face and nose and like, just, just ridiculous. Right. And then I, I burst open the door to my kids and I'm like, Hey kids. And I just go and like, <laughs> My, and, and the greatest sound to a dad's ear, my, my daughter's like, dad, you are, um, I can't even believe you're the greatest. This is so great. And I'm just like, right. My heart is just warm. And, but again, if I hadn't done my miracle morning that morning, right. And, and, and been so intentional with how I was going to show up for my kids, I wouldn't have shown up that way. And imagine that that's what the miracle morning does for you. If you get to be that intentional with how you show up to every single aspect of your life, every single day of your life. Yeah. So, but, but there is this balance, right. Between like truly being tired and finding time for the sleep and how, how are you, you know, like we think of Saturdays as the day to catch up because we spent all Monday through Friday, go, 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 go. So how do we balance between hitting your stride right for the day and then yeah. also giving back what you need in terms of rest and recharge? Yeah, great. It's a great question. And I definitely, I don't think that I'm going to, my, my, my opinion, my experience here is that we shouldn't live our life so that we have to recharge on the weekends. That's my thought. Uh, is that we should live relatively balanced throughout the week. And um, you know, I used to in 2000, you know, five, six, I was a workaholic. In fact, for longer than that. But anyway, I was a workaholic. And this is before I had kids. And mm -hmm. I would work until 9 p.m. And then I would get off and I would like watch TV with my my wife, now my wife, my girlfriend at the time, right? 
watch TV with her for an hour and go to bed. And then one day she, it was kind of a new relationship. So she didn't want to step on my toes, but finally she was like, Hey, I'd love to see you more than an hour a day. Like we lived together at the time, you know, and um, we were pretty serious. And she goes, is there any way you don't have to work until nine every night, you know? And I loved my work. So it didn't even feel like work to me. And so anyway, long story, not too long. I, uh, I, I just decided, I go, okay, you know what? I committed to her. I go, I'll start getting off at seven. And she's like, great. And guess what? Every day at se- and seven, by the way, went to six, which then went to five. And now it's three. Cause that's when my kids get out of school and I don't work when they're out of school. Um, yeah. and here's the thing. Every day at seven or now at three, I had way more work to do that I could have kept working on. I could have talked, I could have justified why I should keep working because I have more things on my to-do list than I can possibly do. And it reminds me of a great quote from a Jason Mraz song. He simply said, life is for living, Mm. you know, and we, we've been conditioned, we've been brainwashed by our society, uh, by our leadership, I mean, you know, by whoever, right into thinking that no life's for producing life is for working life is for getting ahead life for making more money life for making the most of every possible second like no life's for living yeah you get to your deathbed you're not gonna look back and be like man i'm so glad i worked my butt off what i think our realtors are experiencing in the market right now so we're in a housing market that literally has almost no capacity agents are working harder than they've ever worked to put a deal together to serve up somebody's, you know, most innate needs, the need for shelter. And especially during, through the pandemic and in terms of our, our focus on home. Um, and they're, you know, they're working, 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 like white knuckling it through every day just to try to get a deal done. But, and, and what I'm thinking is you're telling them, well, hey, the work's gonna be there tomorrow, but they're, they're an eat what they kill industry right so how do they balance between meeting their basic needs and then managing through you know not being a workaholic that's really hard yeah no and i'm I'm so glad that you didn't just take my first answer and that we're diving a little (laughs) deeper because this is sorry no (laughs) no this is so good um so so yeah so my thought on that is that i do believe there are times to be intentionally out of balance right there are times to strike while the iron is hot and 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 especially in real estate i will say and so i have there's two answers to this um but the first one is that uh yeah the market's not going to be like this forever right now is the time to maximize and to really save and create that emergency fund create that 6 months of of you know right like create that cushion so that when there's not as much to hunt as you mentioned right then then you know, you, 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 you balance that out, right? You're not spending everything that you make. And I saw that in 2008, I have a friend who was making a million dollars a year as a lender and, um, and, and he spent the dude and he had, you know, he had the house, he had multiple cars. He, I mean, you know, he had a Bentley, he had a Rolls Royce, he had all the things. Right. And then the market, uh, it crashed in 28, 2008. And he, he had not, he had not, he was living, he was spending everything he was making. Right you know, and then he foreclosed on the house. So, so keeping that in mind, really taking advantage of this time now, but here's the, here's the point. So that's the macro. The micro is go to bed 30 minutes earlier to wake up 30 minutes earlier to dedicate time to nurturing yourself, care enough about your mental, emotional, physical, and spiritual well-being to wake up and, and, and have that morning, you know, whether you call it your miracle morning or whatever, have that morning time. So it's not an either or. It's not a well, the market's hot, so I got I don't have time for personal growth. No, it's the market's hot. So I'm not gonna watch Netflix as late at night. <laughs> I'm just gonna, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna binge for 30 minutes less to wake up 30 minutes earlier and you know do with a few of the miracle morning practices. Yeah, that makes perfect sense to me. I want to talk a little bit about how you came about at this practice, at this at building this ritual. And my understanding is that it came through your own personal trauma through health experiences that you'd had. And I can share a little bit about my own trauma and maybe we can connect on this front. But yeah. I have a, a six-year-old now who had a kidney transplant just shy of two years old, two weeks before he turned two. And the first two years of his life were totally traumatic. Dialysis at home, very, very sick, made his way. Now he's a rip-roaring nutball six-year-old, which nice. is a miracle in and of itself. But I know that for me, what enabled my success to, to support him through that was routine. That mm-hmm. if I could anchor you know, in the things that I could control, that the things that I could not control 
were less scary to me yeah. and less overwhelming. And I suspect that maybe some of that was true for you, but tell us more about your experience and how you came at this. Yeah. To be clear, the Miracle Morning wasn't an idea. Like it wasn't a, oh, here's a great book idea. I think this would right. be really, right? This was a very organic, I was, it was 2007 and the US economy started crashing. Um, I, I'm what you would call a delusional optimist, right? Where I'm just like, I, I, I've, I've learned from that mistake. I'm a little more realistic now, but I used to be like, people would go, dude, the, you're watching the news? The economy's not looking good. And I'd be like, I create my own economy. I don't live in fear, blah, 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 <laughs> right? You know, and, uh, and then all of a sudden it's like, oh, you don't, you know, creating your own economy is one thing, but if, if your clients, I was a coach at the time, all of my income came from one-on-one -on -one coaching with salespeople, in fact, real estate agents, business owners, right? And so all of a sudden I start getting, you know, I got my first phone call. Hey, Hal, our economy, our, our industry is really hurting. I can't afford to pay for coaching anymore. I'm like, oh, oh okay. Yeah, no problem. I mean, you know, do what's best for you. And then another client and then another client. And then and all of a sudden in, in, a, in a matter of months, I lost over half of my clients as in half of my income scores. I couldn't pay my mortgage. I, I lost, my house went into foreclosure, which is depressing in and of itself, you know? Yeah, um, yeah. I was living on credit cards where I went from being debt free, like every month I was paid off to, I had $52,000 on my credit card for groceries and gas and, you know, just living. Mm -hmm. And I got really depressed and really scared. And, and like, I felt like I was drowning in quicksand and a series of events led me to listen to this Jim Rohn audio. And I'm going to share the quote that changed my whole life, because for some people listening, this may be a quote that, you know, is, is a game changer for you. Uh, Jim Rohn said, your level of success will seldom exceed your level of personal development because success is something you attract by the person that you become. Mm -hmm. I'll say it again. Your level of success will seldom exceed your level of personal development because success is something you attract by the person you become. And in that moment, it like it hit me and I went, okay. That makes sense. So if you develop yourself into with the knowledge and the confidence and the habits, right, then you're naturally going to, you're going to just attract or create the success that mirrors who you you're becoming, who you've become. Mm -hmm. And I quantified it. I went and everybody listening, you can kind of quantify this for yourself um, or watching on a scale. And I'll ask you this. It's kind of a rhetorical question. Emily, but play along. Okay. Um, on a scale of one to 10, if we are measuring success in any area of our life, our relationships, our health, our finances, you name it, on a scale of one to 10, 10 being the most successful, one being a failure, what, what level of success do we all want? Oh, 10, all day long. 10, right? Yeah. yeah. I've never met anyone that's like, eh, I don't want to be too successful. Yeah. Like, I just want to be like six, a seven. But thanks. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, like one thing that human beings share in common is we all have unlimited potential and we have this deep, innate desire to fulfill that potential. Now we also have the ability to fulfill the potential, but most of us have, it's blocked by fear. It's blocked by insecurity. It's blocked by self doubt. And so we all level 10 success. And in that moment, I listening to Jim Rohn's quote, I quantified it. I went, so if I want level 10 success, what's my level of personal development right now? And at that time I was I was depressed. I was stressed. I was work. I was working till 9 PM, not getting results. Yeah. I was like, I'm at like a two, maybe like a three on a good day. And that's the disconnect is we all want level 10 success. But for most people, the, the level of development that we are fully engaged with and committed to doesn't match that. And so that was when the epiphany, I went, I'm going to go home and I'm going to Google what are the world's most successful people do for their personal development. And I'm going to figure out the one or two practices that I could do every day to quickly become a level 10 person so I can create that success I wanted. And then, as I mentioned earlier, I had a list of six practices, right? And I'm going, well, which is the best? And what if I do all of them, you know, and right? And the next morning I woke up and I, I, I always say this, it's very true. I sucked at all of them. Like I had never meditated before. Like yeah. affirmation. I, you know, I Googled on the internet and they were really goofy. Like, I'm awesome. I'm, I'm, I'm a millionaire. I like, no, I'm not, but I'm, uh, you know, it was just like, just like kidding yourself, you know? So I sucked at the practices, the savers, if you will. Um, but even doing a, you might call it a mediocre morning that morning, that first day, I felt like, wow, if I start every day with this much clarity and motivation and energy and gain this knowledge, 
it's only a matter of time before I become the person that I need to be to create what I want for my life. And that's what the miracle morning does for you. Right. And, and so we're, the last thing I'll say is it's universal. If somebody's like, we, like we just had a documentary come out for the miracle morning movie. Um, yep. Mike Keaton is in the movie. He lost 90 pounds, right? I didn't write the miracle morning as a weight loss book, but he's one of thousands of people that applied their miracle morning to the mindset and the habits and the discipline they needed to lose weight. And then they did other people apply it to increase their income. And then they do to improve their marriage. And then they do. Right. So, yeah, so that's the essence of, you know, how the miracle morning, how it applies and where it came from me. And, and one last thing, I know famous last words, the reason it's called the miracle morning, it didn't have a name. I was just doing this morning practice every morning. And it, within two months of doing the practice, I more than doubled my income. And I want to put really important to point out, this was in 2008 in a declining economy. So I want yeah. you to consider, I know a lot of people, you know, for those, some people, not a lot, a lot, think about, oh gosh, when the economy crashes, what am I going to do? What's the future hold? There's so much that's out of my control. And I'm living proof that even if the economy gets worse, as long as you continue to get better, you can create any kind of results that you want. And because I doubled my income in that time, I started training for an ultra marathon. I went to my wife and he goes, sweetheart, this morning routine has changed our life so dramatically in two months. It feels like a miracle. And she goes, it's your miracle morning. And I go, yeah, I like it. And like, that's where it was born. And then I just started teaching my coaching clients. And, you know, now it's, you know, 12 years later and it's, uh, it's, it's still finding new people every day. Yeah. So you're speaking though, to the, the purpose of the savers as, as offering intention for your day, right. And being really deliberate about where your focus is, what, what you're going to make happen for that day. How much of that intention drives through the remainder of your day? Do you have other routines that you circle back to? Like, how do you close out your day? What is it just the morning or what happens at morning, noon and night? What I find is that the morning is, it's kind of like going to the gym for your mental and emotional and spiritual capacities. Okay. Mm -hmm. So here's what I mean. You don't, you don't go to the gym just to go to the gym, right? You, Most you, day. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You, but, but ultimately if you're, if you're exercising, you're doing it to either get stronger, to have more physical stamina. Right. And so when you leave the gym, you know, if you've been working out for a few weeks, right. You, the strength is there when you need it to lift something at 4 p.m., right? The stamina is there when you need energy throughout the day. And so in the same way, the miracle morning, and I'll, I'll give you some example. I'll give you one example. So silence is the first S in savers. And okay. silence is your meditation time. It's your prayer time. It's your just simply quiet time, your con contemplation, right? Your deep thinking time. Um, you know, I believe that our... The greatest wisdom that's available to us at all times, whether you believe it comes from God or your subconscious or collective intelligence or whatever, um, that comes in silence. We don't hear that voice when we're looking at our phone. We don't hear that voice when we're talking and driving and doing things, right? It's when we're sitting in, that's why the voice usually shows up in the shower or it shows up at night when you're falling asleep. Yeah. But it's beautiful to start your day by going, Breathing and hey, what do I need right now? What do I, who do I need to be? How do I need to feel? And I'll tell you my favorite form of meditation, I call it emotional optimization meditation. And this speaks directly to your question about is it just the morning or does it affect the rest of the day? Or so here's how this works. And if anybody's taking notes, you might, I'll, I'll give you three really simple steps. Okay. Step one, identify which emotion would best serve you right now identify which emotion would best serve me right now. So ask yourself, what emotion would best serve me right now? And, and right now might be today. It might be at this time in your life, right? Like if you're going through a stressful time, you're like, man, I need, I need to feel peace inside, right? Or I've been unhappy. I need to feel happy. So choose the emotion that would best serve you during this time in your life or on this day. And then step two, uh, identify a stimulus that will bring about that emotion for you. So the stimulus could be a memory. Well, the last time I felt happy was blank. All right, let me think about that. How did that feel? Remember that, picture that, imagine that. What did that look like? What did that feel like, right? And get that feeling, embody that emotion. 
go back in time if you need to, right? It might be, if I want to be happy or grateful, I just think of my kids, right? So I don't have to go to a memory. I just literally picture their faces and I'm like, oh, I just get happy, um, right? So, I mean, I feel up to right now, just, just thinking of them, I got happy. So the point is you identify the stimulus that will bring about that emotional state. And then you set your timer to meditate for five minutes or 10 minutes or 30 minutes, whatever you want to do, right? For me, I usually do about 10 minutes of meditation every morning. But I just sit there and I, you know, for lack of a better word, I, I marinate in that emotional state. And here's what's happening from a scientific aspect when you're doing that. You're literally creating and reinforcing neural pathways in your brain that make that emotional state. You're hardwiring it into your nervous system. Mm -hmm. And now you have access to it at any at 2 p.m., at 4 p.m., at 9 p.m., whenever you want. You just yeah. close your eyes, get back into that state. And just like going to the gym, if you go exercise once, the strength